As you progress with your sadhana, you may find it necessary to change your occupation, or you may find that it is only necessary to change the way which you perform your current occupation in order to bring it into line with your new understanding of how it all is. The more conscious that a being becomes, the more he can use any occupation as a vehicle for spreading light. The next true being of Buddha nature that you meet may appear as a bus driver, a doctor, a weaver, an insurance salesman, a musician, a chef, a teacher, or any of the thousands of roles that are required in a complex society. The more parts of the many parts of Christ's body. You will know him because the simple dance that may transpire between you, such as handing him the change as you board the bus, will strengthen in you the faith in the divinity of man. It's as simple as that. It is nice to meet you on the path. That is from Ram Das book. I shared that on Facebook a couple years ago. I've been reading Ram Das for a long time. And I'm not really into gurus, although I've read a lot of their books and uh he's one of my favorites. Probably maybe is my favorite in that sort of realm of spiritual teachers so he died today and so I shared on Facebook a few things that I had shared before I went back to my pictures where I take like a picture of a paragraph and put it into um, uh, show it on Facebook and whatever I'm going to read two more This I shared uh, at least four years ago. I think I read this book. I think this one's from... I think the first book of his I read was called The Only Dance There Is. And I've read several of his other ones. Be Here Now. and um, You can look around and see that the universe is being kept at the plane it is and isn't going up in smoke at the moment. Because when you get on that bus now and then, there's a bus driver who's so high and beautiful that everyone that gets on his bus feels better when they get off the bus than when they got on the bus. He's just driving the bus. He just happens to be Buddha driving a bus. He's not going around saying, I'm Buddha, appearing in town hall. He's just being Buddha. He's just doing what Buddha does. And when you begin to realize that the earth is full of very high beings who are constantly spreading this other force, you know, creating this other kind of consciousness. Now these are the things I'm talking about as the fourth stage. So what I'm saying is that this evening is part of my work on myself because I realize that the only thing you have to offer another human being ever is your own state of being. You can cop out only just so long saying, I've got all this fine coat, Joseph, Joseph's coat of many colors. I know all this and I can do all this. But everything you do, whether you're cooking food or doing your own being, you're only manifesting how evolved a consciousness you are. That's what you're doing with another human being. That's the only dance there is. When you're protesting against somebody, the degree of consciousness with which you're protesting determines how well they can hear what it is you're really saying. Ram Dass. Richard Alpert. So many of you, if you're... You just listen to the show, and maybe you don't. You, my guess is you already know who. If you're, you already know who Ram Dass is. But quick 
bio of him before I get into whatever it is that I'm going to do with this show here. Uh, he was a professor at Harvard, and I think he taught at several other like Ivy League schools, a psychology professor, and so um, he had this thing. He was a psychology professor at Harvard, and you know, so he was. He had all these people listening to him. I mean, just the the weight of yes, I'm a Harvard professor, and uh, and he became a bit uh, disenchanted with that whole thing because he realized that as he looked around at these other professors, as he began to question what he was doing and look for more answers, he didn't really see other people there that had answers that he was looking for. They they didn't really know how it is, as uh, he puts it. So he meets uh, Timothy Leary down the hall, and Timothy Leary is working on figuring out how it all is also, and they end up uh, doing mushrooms, and then they together, and then a bunch of LSD, and on and on and on with the, the psychedelics and these ex- experiments. And so he went from kind of being like this square Harvard professor in this, Harvard professor lifestyle and people looking at him as he's and treating him as if he's a Harvard professor. Uh, he he wanted to get rid of that and uh, I believe he ended up getting fired. That I think that was the start. I'm pretty sure they fired him. Yeah, and I think I don't know if it was because they ordered like half a million dollars worth of LSD and then that's like in 1969 money or <laughs> whatever it was, but. He, uh, yeah, so he goes to India and he he meets his guru, one of the guys that he ends up meeting. So he goes to India and he's going through all these hard times there. And um, then he meets um, Bhagavan Das there, who happens to be from Laguna Beach. So he finds himself following him around everywhere and is barefoot and blisters tore up feet and so he goes all the way to India to follow around this crazy guy from Laguna Beach but it seemed like Bhagavan Das uh, knew how it was and um, knew how to get where Ram Das wanted to go so Ram Baba, Bhagavan Das is the one who introduced him to his guru um it's funny how things go. So getting ready for this show, um, I'll have sandalwood incense. It's uh, getting pretty thick in here. It's, um, and I burned some sage, as I always do, um, I have one sage bundle left. I was burning from two. One of them was from a uh, friend, Adrian, and then that one's all gone. And I, I have this bundle that my friend Shakuntala gave me a, a long time ago, and I still burn it before pretty much every show I do. And um, that's kind of a normal thing. I burn the sage. I burn the in, um, some incense. And then today... I. I put on um, some frankincense and myrrh um, resins, and I was burning that before I started, too. I thought it might be appropriate. When... So, if you're watching this on video, I know most people just listen... And, but the show, the video is also on YouTube and I put the video on YouTube and Patreon. And so you may notice I'm not wearing a shirt if you're, (laughs) if you're watching. So, so I had this guy. And I just noticed it, but I guess it was like five, like a, a week ago or so that 
I was telling people in a video, I just, I was finishing up a workout. And so sometimes I show the last couple sets of a workout that I'm doing. Um, cause I'm, if you don't already know, I'm a strength and conditioning instructor. So, uh, if you want to, my, my Instagram is at Hadley fitness, H A D L E Y fitness. Uh, you can look me up the same way on Facebook, Ryan Hadley. And then Hadley fitness is my other page. And then the path notes podcast has its own page. Anyways, I noticed, um, this guy, like about a week ago, put in the comment section he said where'd your shirt go hashtag can't take you seriously i was like what i'm a like what not wearing a shirt can't take me seriously so i wasn't gonna respond to that and then it, I guess it kind of it was still bouncing around in my head, and I, so I click on that Facebook app again. I'm like, I'm going to type him out. So I'm going to type out something nice and clever here. And then I was like, Half, what am I doing? That's dumb. I'm deleting it. I looked at the guy's profile. It looks like he's a trainer, too. It looks like he does stuff for veterans. And uh, so I, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to leave that alone. Okay, I don't need him to take me seriously. So, I had on uh, <laughs> kind of like this dingy sort of shirt. It's actually laying on the floor right here. <laughs> and uh, I was like, uh, do I want to like change my shirt before the podcast? And I was like, I'm just going to take my shirt off. Am I making sense here? Does that do you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, I know you understand what I'm talking about, but why? So why did I decide to not wear a shirt for this show? What does it have to do with Ram Dass? So even though this is my shirt, I mean, I guess it's all right. So here it is. It's almost the same color as the background. That camouflage. Um, it's not me. Okay. I don't even, so I'm shedding that. And this is like, this is me. This, this thing that I'm, I'm made out of, I guess it's not all I am. I'm, I'm whatever is piloting this body. But I think that this body, it's, I guess it, it's me too, but there'll be a time when I shed it. I'll get rid of it someday. One of the favorite before I get on, on to that one. So what do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you see yourself? Do you see a fat guy? Do you see a fat woman? Do you see someone that's too skinny? Do you see someone that needs to do some more bench press to work on your, your pecs more? Are your biceps too small? Are your arms too fat? Is your head too big? Do you have a big pimple on your nose? The... What about hair? Is your is your hair perfect, or do you have some kind of problem with it? Is it? <clears throat> what do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you like that? Is that you? When you put on clothes to dress yourself up, do you wear the same thing to church as you do the bar? Think about it. 
What are you doing? What are we doing? You know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't or that it's not okay to dress differently differently if you're going to church or going to the bar. I personally don't go to church. I don't have anything against any of it. But um, and the only reason I would go to a bar is to watch a band play. I don't drink or smoke or anything. We, we, we put on these clothes to express the way we want other people to see us, interestingly enough, right? That's, that's kind of what we're doing. So after Ram Dass shed his his body today, and uh, thinking of that guy that can't take me seriously because I wasn't wearing a shirt <laughs> when I was working out at my gym, uh, I just thought it would be appropriate to not wear a shirt. And sometimes I look in the mirror. Like I can see myself in the on my screen now. And I see a guy maybe just do more like lateral raises or something. I have a pretty strong overhead press for weights. Uh, I, I don't really think about, oh, I need to get my shoulders bigger. But Sometimes I'll look in the mirror and I'm, I'm judging myself. So even though I don't really work out to look a particular way, I work out for um, to be able to do things. Sometimes I still like, or if I'm, if I have my, my, um, if I look down at my legs and the way my pants might hug my legs as they go in there, oh, it's, my leg looks skinny. I don't look down and just see my leg. I look down and my leg is skinny. Okay. Is it even my leg? No. I appreciate my leg. I appreciate both of them. One of my knees is a little sore. I uh, did a pretty good amount of martial arts training in the last three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And today my knee was a little sore. But I know it's not really sore compared to what a lot of people feel in their knees. It's just like a little reminder that Hey, you're uh, you're still a human, and this body is not invincible. So we take on a lot of different clothes, don't we? Right? We have the we we hear the story when we're young, the emperor wears no clothes, and you know what that's all about, and. One, th one thing that Ram Dass did as he was getting into psychedelics and realizing, getting closer and closer to realizing how it is, I mean, he was taking tons of these different hallucinogens and, and then he was coming back, he'd come back from India and then He'd have a a big lawn full of people wanting to hear what he learned in the East. And he was popular with like the, the hippies and other people that were. I, when I say hippies, I I mean that as a compliment. I, I those are uh, I'm, I mean that as a compliment. That's my friends. He was popular with the with them. These people that are like 
trying to figure it out. They 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 see that this box that that you know some of our some parts of our experience try to put us in, whether that's parents or teachers or the government or the whatever, like try like here's this box that you're allowed to stay in. And then some people were like, hey, man, that's not how it is. I want to find out how it really is. And then so they'll go off to India and see a completely different world and learn from the teachers there. Some of them, of course, better than others. Ram Das took his LSD over to India to give to his guru and other gurus so they could tell him what they thought about it. And basically it's like, it's okay, but it's not as good as meditation. Even after taking uh, heaping helping of it. So eventually, Ram Das he got rid of those clothes too, the clothes of the the identity of the psychedelic experimenter the seeker through that way. So he, he said when you would take these substances, then they like, it, oh, he, now he realizes how it is. We're all love. We're all the same. We're all the, and then eventually it would wear off. And then what? You have to take it again? What? Well, he thought he did. Maybe he did. But he at least thought he did and kept doing it. And then eventually it's like, yeah, that's not it. That's, that's not it. You don't need that. I see a lot of uh, it's there's, it's more socially acceptable here, and I know people from all over the world hear this show. <laughs> just blows my mind to see the map of people listening, but here it's becoming more and more sociable to socially acceptable, rather, um, to smoke weed and mushrooms are being legalized in different states, and I think that's good. I don't think any of this stuff should be illegal. But people are attaching their identity to these things. And I, I see it with the Facebook friends and on Instagram. People are, you know, like smoking or advocating for. Mushrooms, and I, I do believe they they can help people. It's been clinically proven to help people in uh, some uh, circumstances. Uh, not that it has to be clinically proven for people to do it just because they want to to have fun. But I mean, it's just like something that you're attaching your identity to. Because what if what if that goes away? Then what? So we need to get more and more used to just taking off those those clothes too. One 
the famous quotes from Ram Dass that I really like is, we're all just walking each other home. Or, and uh, <laughs> treat everyone like they're God in drag. Um, but, you know, when, when we're, we're all just walking each other home, and I think of, you know, how fragile these bodies are. We don't know what we're going to get. I was just listening to uh, um, uh, as part of a sh- uh, show, and, and like a woman was walking in Manhattan. She's an architect, and a brick fell off the side of an old building and hit her in the head, and it it killed her. And Uh, I mean, what do you make of that? People are dying for all kinds of reasons, all ages. Some don't even make it to their, their first day outside the womb. Some cruise past a hundred. We don't know what we're gonna get, and we we can judge each other pretty harshly. You know, maybe it's for not wearing a shirt. Really, that's. That's your problem with me? But we judge each other for all kinds of things, don't we? We want to see those traits that we don't like in someone else as something that we are not. But that's, but that, that's us, and even though somebody's at this different place than us, like maybe they're a Democrat or they're a Republican or they're a fat guy or they're a fat woman or a skinny guy or a skinny woman or whatever. Oh, her muscles are too big. Ugh. We have all these like these bizarre judgments of each other, don't we? But if you think what like, that we're all just walking each other home, you know, we're we're all having a tough time here. So even though, you know, the stuff I put out on social media is it's all positive stuff. I'm sharing some workout stuff. I'm cool pictures of like friends. I see cool uh, some cool person doing something cool, and I I want to sh- uh, share it. And I'm not. Sharing stuff that's like, look at this idiot, or, oh, that other political party guy, oh. So sometimes we wonder where we can... draw the line between what we will do and and what we won't for other people you know most of us want to help people i think most people are good most people are 
We have both. We have both things, right? We're, we're a combination of, of good and bad. We have our ideal self that we're trying to present to the world. And then those thoughts that come in, those, those judgment thoughts, those dark thoughts of wanting to do bad things. How do we know if something's bad? How do we know if something's evil? Pretty much if you do not want that done to you, then you know that it, it hurts somebody else. And if you do that, then that's bad. It's pretty simple. Do you like to get second chances? Third chances, because you messed up again. Fourth, fifth chances. How many times did you mess up when you were a kid? And you're, what, do you, what do your parents do? You get more and more chances, right? Because every day you're messing up. You're, you know, you pop out in this world, and oh, what's going on here? And you're, you spend. It takes so long just to kind of settle in. A lot of people just never really do settle in, do they? So maybe when you're doing something for someone and you're getting sick of it because they're not responding in a way that you want, you got to... You gotta really think, do you, do you want to keep doing what you're doing? Or do you want to say, I'm done with that? Now maybe saying I'm done with that is the appropriate action. And maybe you just need to change the way you think about it. A lot of my favorite stuff of Ram Dass, my, my favorite stuff of Ram Dass was his audio lectures, his, his uh, or lectures, should I say lectures, his, his, the audio collection. There's uh, some cool ones at our library here. I've had all of them. I've listened to every word on more than one occasion, a bunch of CDs. You notice when um, two out of the three Paragraphs that I read today and mentioned the bus driver. Well, I used to drive a cab. And when I drove a cab, when I'd be like waiting for somebody, uh, you know, in between calls or maybe they're, they're going into the store and or whatever it was, I would have uh, several books, usually spiritual books. A lot of times uh, martial arts books, like strength and conditioning books, but also a lot of spiritual books. There's a continuum of that. What's the difference between a, a fitness book and a spiritual book. There, there really isn't one. There is not a di there's not a difference between a spiritual book and a fitness book. It's the same thing. But anyways, so I'm reading about that. And I'm I'm reading these spiritual books, and I'm reading a Ram Dass book. And he's this is many years ago. And he was saying that. When he was in India, he thought, he knew that he couldn't go back to being a professor. He said, as a professor, what he did was 
He'd spend like 12 hours reading, studying, writing stuff down, you know, taking all of his notes of everything that he was studying, prepare for his, his lecture. Then he'd have all the students in front of him at the lecture, and he would read what, basically what he wrote down, and then they would write it down. So he would read stuff and write it down, and then he would tell the other people about it, and then they would write it down. He's like, this is not, this, something's not quite right here. So he needed to like change things. So he said, well, maybe I'll, when, when I get back, he's saying from India, he wanted to be a chauffeur. Because he said that he could read spiritual books while he was waiting on people. And I'm reading a Ram Dass book while I'm a chauffeur waiting on people. See that? I'm in my cab waiting for somebody, reading about Ram Dass, reading a Ram Dass book, saying that when he gets back from India, he wants to be a chauffeur so he can read spiritual books. You see that? Like, and, he, and serve people. So it's like serving people by taking them where they need to go. I had a lot of experiences driving the cab. Well, I look back at my cab driving experiences as mostly good. Not everything was awesome, but I don't remember that that stuff. I have to like try a little bit harder to remember the bad things that happened. But the people I met, some amazing experiences. One I've told on the show a few times, but. I got to know somebody who I'm pretty sure was an angel or a bodhisattva or something like that. And I saw her like five times a week, maybe like five days a week even, sometimes twice a day. And she was able to like turn this dial in me and I quit drinking, I quit smoking weed. That day was the last day I ever heard from her. I picked her up for months. She never called me again for a ride. I would drop her off at her apartment building. We would just talk in the in the cab for a while, maybe 20 minutes, more, less. I'd be dropping her off at work. She, she'd be a little early, and we would just talk in the car. She never told me I should quit drinking or smoking weed. This was, did I tell you, seven and a half years ago. She never told me to. We just talked about spiritual stuff the whole time. She seemed to know everything, but in a very cool way. Not preachy, not... It was a really... Amazing, uh, you know, relationship that was, and so once I made that decision, and I went home, I, I dropped her off, and when I when I saw her, we talked in the car for a minute, and I dropped her off, and I, I remember seeing her, like walking up to her apartment, and I was there like see my potential if that makes sense, and I got this message of. You have to be a ma magnet for what you want to attract. Okay, so if you know if I wanted to attract the right the right woman, the right things into my life, I like I don't want to be with a, a woman that's drinking and smoking all, all the time. So I, then I I can't be that guy because a, a woman like that's not going to want a guy that does that. And then these other things that I was wanting. Well, it just didn't fit that. So that was the main message that I got from her, which she didn't tell me those words. It was like a, um, just like this like transmission of 
knowing and yeah you have to make yourself into a magnet for what you want to attract and so I went home that day had my last like half a joint my last beer I didn't even finish it and then never heard from her again it was like she knew I, I didn't need her anymore, I guess. Like, she did her job, and then she was off to help someone else turn the dial in their life. So even though I, th I, said I think she's an angel or bodhisattva... We all have that potential to affect people. And some of the teachers that I have, I've had have been, it could be harsh. My jujitsu teacher, there was like, <laughs> there's some harshness there. And then somebody like her that just kind of like gently pointed the way. So I think now in all the Things that I'm doing with, I'm incredibly busy with business, different business things, and I just started this video, uh, it's called Freestyle Kettlebell Club on Patreon, and it's just like, just for $5 a month, people can get access to all of my uh, training videos which they're like now between about 40 minutes and 60 minutes, and there's four of them up now. I just started it a week ago, and I'll do at least, put at least one new one up per week that'll be technique instruction, follow along workouts, mostly kettlebell training, but I'm going to have body weight training in there also. So it'll be kettlebell and body weight training in the same workouts. And then I'll eventually do some stuff with barbells, dumbbells sometimes I throw some dumbbell stuff in as to just show you like the alternative for the kettlebell but I think I'm going to kind of like back away from that a little bit and then just focus on the kettlebell stuff at first and then go into I'm kind of like just seeing how it goes and what I, what I feel like is the next right thing to do at the time but so I, I have that going on and you know the podcast Clients at the gym. I have what I call my job job. I still work at a, a shop and dye shop. And so I'm, I basically cut wood with a laser all day is what, you know, not all day, some of the day. Um, you know, I work from 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. there, come home, clean up, get to the gym, do the stuff. So I have like, all these things going on, train martial arts. I teach some people and train some people and have like all these things going on. And sometimes there may be a little bit of uh, frustration somewhere in how I want things to be and the way they are. And I think that's why I have so many cool things happening. I, mean, I forgot also I'm developing this project with a few other friends that will be doing it white. White Pine Wilderness Academy next, uh, starting in the spring. You know, so I have all these different things happening, and I'm always like not quite satisfied with all this stuff. I'm like trying to make all these things happen, and I can become somewhat frustrated at these different parts, but I believe that's it can be a healthy thing. And then when I look at like what I have going on, the amount of awesome things that I have going on right now, 
is it just amazes it, it it's just amazing who I'm my friends I have like I've always had a cool group of of friends and like the people that I, I hang out with now some of these people that I, I I hang out with we train together pretty much every time we hang out So I, I have some friends that the vast majority of times that we've been together, we're training. It's pretty cool. It's um, you know that's kind of way my life has been for quite some time, but. I really like uh, who I'm hanging out with now and who's wanting to do business with me. I have these different business things going on in different spots of so the people that are asking me to do stuff. And I am I have more opportunities than what I have time for at the, at the moment. And I'm even like people, I uh, won't we'll see names, but if like people that have asked me if I want to do a work on something together and kind of like say yes and then there's no follow up for quite some time I'm still thinking about it there's and I'm putting stuff in place without even telling them that can perhaps be a a building block for them also I'm not even I haven't even told them who knows how it's going to work out just since I started my gym in April is when I moved in, there's already been changes. And um, so it, it's hard to say, like, make plans and God laughs, right? So why am I rambling on about that? Well, I was talking about the Ram Dass quote. We're all just walking each other home. So if you have... The, some friend that you're getting frustrated with, think about why. And do you have a right to be? Now, if, if someone is just treating you terribly and you don't want to, it, it's not healthy to put up with it anymore, then you don't have to. I've I've walked away from many friendships. And, but sometimes... Oftentimes, I think people just need understanding because you know that whatever they're going through, it's tough. You know, some people have it tougher than others. Some people have horrible medical things going on. A buddy of mine, it, it was interesting t timing. I was putting up this video. I did a, this uh, um, kettlebell swing tutorial. I don't get all, all into it, but I put it on YouTube. You can watch it for free. It was in response to somebody asked me to do it basically, and I so I posted it in one spot, and I'm working on getting it on my other pages. And my buddy calls me, and I'm just finishing up this last part of it, and I, I answer the phone, and, and uh, he's like, he's like, hey man, I just wanted to say you're. I'm watching that tutorial. I'm only about halfway through it, and I'm like, I, I didn't even know he. I didn't. It took. It took me a minute to realize he was talking about the one that I'm working on. I was working on at that moment, so I was still I was just like finishing up, sharing it to my, these different spots. So he was complimenting me on that, and we get to talking about some different stuff. And then he had had this pretty, very rough health situation, and I thought it had cleared up, and it kind of did, but then it came back. And uh, so he's going through some some rough stuff, and you know, like everybody's kind of like going through these these different things. Everybody has these different lives. We're all we all have something a little bit different going on. So maybe like if uh, someone's a, a business owner, they're they're trying to get their business off the ground, and it's like these ups and downs, and these great moments, and these catastrophes, and these 
there's all this business stuff and stress like oh yeah and then the kids and then this oh, i gotta focus on this business thing because trying to take care of the kids i'm trying to build something i'm trying to leave them something and then focus on this and, oh my friend and i have this other friend she lives really far away she's going through really awful medical things too she lives in australia and i keep meaning to get a hold of her more and i miss miss that i'm like okay i got i need to get a hold of her again and i i send her a message and she responds and i send one back and she responds and i need to respond again and i don't and i have this other friend that's going through something and this other friend i'm trying to do all these different things and Everybody's going through all this different stuff, and probably sounds like your story too, doesn't it? Am I talking about me or am I talking about you? Right? We know all these people that are going through all these different things, and we can relate to them in all these different ways. Like, and so we can become stressed out and agitated and we can express ourselves in ways that do not suit our ideal self when we should be having more compassion with our friends and we do something harsh instead speaking of agitated I was actually before I found out Ram Dass died today I was thinking about doing a show about agitation it's like, so what's agitation mean? Have you thought of two meanings yet? Can you t take a take a second and guess where I'm going to go with this thought? Agitation, agitator. What's an agitator? What is being agitated? What am I going to talk about? What am I going to say? Think about it. I bet you can guess. I bet a lot of you already have it. What's that thing in your washer called that jerks the clothes around, spins it this way and then that way, and you get it twist it this way and then that way, and twist it this way and then that way, and just shaking it back and forth, twisting, twisting, shaking up the water. It's, What's it doing? Why is it being so mean to your clothes? See? See what I'm getting at? You pour the detergent in. How do you make it sudsy? You have to have that agitator on, right? You throw your, your clothes in, right? See what I'm getting at? So it takes this agitation to shake out our ideal self. That's how we can, we can use that to clean ourselves. But it takes some skill, doesn't it? I think that's that's why so many people like the Ram Dass quote, we're all just walking each other home. Treat everybody like they're God in drag. I don't think I finished my thought earlier of like why I like the Ram Dass audio lectures and and because he had like this groovy like sixty ways of of, of speaking. I, I love the the phrases he uses, just like that. He's just so cool to listen to. Just I, I just really like the sound of his voice and those phrases that 
just kind of like the way the way he could put something and take these ideas and so he had this this he took his western education to the east to enhance his spirituality and so he was able to articulate these things for a western audience in ways that we can we can really understand and not that we can't understand the person that's from india but maybe it's like partly like a, you know un- understanding culturally where you know uh, a lot of the americans are On, I was thinking of when um, I was, when I saw Ram Dass had died today, I got on the library's website and I was going to request Ram Dass books and I was going to pick one up from the library. They had one at the library that's on my way home. And uh, it was the one, the only dance there is. And I was going to read some quotes out of that and I decided not to. I, I decided to just do everything the way I am, without a shirt, without the clothes, without the the book to read, to make myself sound another way besides just how I am and I read those three paragraphs to start with so I decided to just here's where I am and a lot of times when I record these and I didn't take any notes. I, I just knew that I was going to read those things. You know, a lot of times I say, or I think, um, oh man, I forgot to say this. I, I should. I meant to mention that. And Or even if I do, I go through my notes and check off each one. I'll, I'll say, oh, I should have said this. I should have added that I guess um, it's just not we're just not going to do anything perfectly and that's okay And it's good to look at what we've done and want to improve. And I guess it's the amount of agitation in our mind that determines whether that's healthy or damaging. Then Almitra spoke, saying, We would ask now of death. And he said, You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, Open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. 
In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your, your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountaintop, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. It's from the prophet Khalil Gibran. See you next time.